Hello, number two. Dark Souls 2. In the last episode, we had gotten, well, we started the adventure and we've made Blorgus 2. Blorgus 3, not Blorgus 2. Um, we also went through the tutorial and we landed here in Majula. We haven't done much other than that. Um, in this episode, we'll be going through the land of Majula, exploring the area, and we'll be also be talking to most of the NPCs. We'll also be heading down to the tunnel over there, where I showed you in the last episode. But before we do that, we'd like to talk about the weapon of the day. The weapon of the day is dagger, or the weapon category of the day is dagger. There are there are a few daggers. There doesn't come to mind how many there were. I think there's like 10, 12. No, there's nine daggers in the game. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what number. It's 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 seven. It's uh, it's seven or nine. It's one of those. There's there's that amount of daggers in the game, uh, each one with differing uh, abilities, but for the most part, they all act like this. For the most part, they all do this attack. Um, you can parry with them. If you press R1 or uh, RT. Yeah, I think it's RT. It might RB. Or if you press the mouse press mouse click left right mouse or whatever no right mouse is heavy attack left mouse is light attack um if you press the buttons then you'll be able to do the normal attack the heavy attack is you charge it up and you do this unlike dark souls 2 not dark unlike dark souls 3 there is no charge r2 uh it's just a normal r2 they do take a little longer but yeah um if you'll notice, they are extremely fast, and if you level them up well enough, they do damage. They also do a lot of repost damage, uh, that's most of them. So if you parry, and then repost, you'll do a lot more damage. So, yeah. So let's just walk around Majula and talk to some NPCs. Because, you know, I can. Let's start off with, uh, you. You look like an interesting guy. Who are you? All right, good talk. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. Hmm, okay. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. I'm a blacksmith. I'm nothing without my tools. Bring me that key. Chop, chop. So he's a blacksmith. I'm a blacksmith. Okay. He's a blacksmith, and uh, blacksmiths are nothing without tools. So it looks like in our adventure we'll need to find a key for that guy. Um, that could be easy enough. Life gem. Hmm, good. Oh man, there's a huge pit here. There's an item. Well, I'm not stupid, and I'm not going to fall down there, because A, fall damage in Dark Souls 2 is so much more than Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3. It's actually ridiculous. Either way. Before I talk to him, let's come up here and get the chest that's up here. Remember, you can break chests, so just be careful around them. A Titanite Shard. Another uh, thing that came uh, from Dark Souls 1 and is still in Dark Souls 3. The Titanite Shard. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, well, really, it's not. Um, you, need, you need them to level up. That's kind of it. Unlike Dark Souls, uh, unlike Dark Souls 3, you won't need 12 of them to level your weapon all the way plus 3. I believe all you need is, is 6 in this game. Uh, oh. Out of the way. Uh, hello there. W welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morling, and I, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. I could really use the business, if you'd be so kind. I'm very kind of a person, so yeah. So, this guy is the one-stop shop for shields and armor. Um, as we'll get to the game, he'll be a little bit more useful. Um, but do keep in mind, he's very important. Also, if you kill him, he gives you armor that increases souls. Well, I... So, yeah. Um... So just watch out for that. Try to head in here. 
doesn't seem that we can. Well, if I've learned anything from any games I've played to this day, always hit a rock or always hit that. In Estus Flash Shard, uh, very similar to Dark Souls 3, they level up the amount of Estus that you can get. Or, or amount of Estus flasks you can get. Um, hi. Oh, undead, are we? Oh, uh, yeah. And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, suit yourself. Oh, yes. You may call me Shalqua. Enchante. Enchante. So, what did you want anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> So, uh, sweet Shaqua, uh, she, or Shantae, or whatever she wanted to mean, she's a little weird. She, first off, let's talk Nothing suited you. Well, that's not what I wanted. Oh, <laughs> you do have the time. Now let's look at their items. She sells five rings, all of which can be useful. Uh, let me explain them in order. You kill an enemy, gives you HP, take less damage from fall damage. Let me explain something about this, though. Um... It's not like Dark Souls 3, where you won't take any fall damage. You still will fit take fall damage. Um, I think it only, like, halves it, though. It's something like that. I wouldn't... Like, I'd be careful with this. Don't go jumping off cliffs willy-nilly. Because you will die from fall damage in this game. Too many times. Next item, uh, item we have the Red Eye Ring. Uh, 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 one that was not in Dark Souls 3. Um, and it's... Basically, oh... Cool, you can see me from a mile away, and the enemies will come closer to you. The name engraved ring. This really isn't useful unless you're playing co-op with somebody. Co-op, this allows you to pick a god out of, like, I think, nine. And if you, your co-op partner also picks the same god out of nine, you guys will have an easier time connecting. It's like the password system in Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne. Except a little less, a little less, um... You know, good because with the password system you have a certain password. With this, you only have nine gods out of out of the entire fan base playing this game. And ring of whispers you can hear the voices of foes. I have no idea what this does. I think you might just be able to hear a little farther. I have never gotten the item, so I don't know what it does. And then we have <coughs> this. I've explained what homeward bones and prism stones were. What? And let's explain uh, alluring skulls and Tal Lord Talisman. Learning skulls are something that we've seen before uh, in Dark Souls 3, but they aren't as much. They I don't think they're as useful in this game. I don't. Um, basically, what they are is uh, you throw them, and the enemies will attack that area that you threw the skull, and they will ignore you until it dissipates and it, they come back at you. That's the kind of idea. It's trying to allure the allure them somewhere else while you get out of the area. Lloyd Salisman's basically blocks Eskis reco Eskis. Eskis recovery while within a limited area. Basically, your, your enemies can't heal. That's the idea. Uh, but, let's say you're using it on a PvP character, they can still use um, life gems and stuff. I think. Or you, if you use it on an NPC that uses Eskis Flask, which there are a few. Uh, they can't heal at all unless they heal from magic and stuff. So yeah, and then covenants. This basically shows you all the covenants that you have. I think there's like ten. Uh, allows you to abandon them and go back to normal mode. Um, it also shows you the rank they're in. There are three ranks per covenant. Nothing yeah. suited you, I presume. Yeah. Well, that. Oh, you might be wondering why I picked uh, Dagger of the Day today. I picked Dagger of the Day, the, the weapon of the day, to be the dagger because I know. The dagger is not the most useful weapon in the game. It also crosses out one of the many things that we needed. You know, we'll talk to her soon. We want to come up here and uh, talk to him. Talk to this guy. Hello. You're undead, aren't you? No. You have that distinct scent. I do. The smell of irreversible fate. Oh, cool. This is Majula. Wow. 
It is a kind of settlement. A place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. I see. I am Solden. And like you, I lost everything. And now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me, or anybody. Okay. Do you know much about souls? I know a few things about them. Even I'm not certain, but... I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth. That's the real curse, right there. We undead will never die. And that's quite a predicament, really. Cool. There are four beings in this land with giant souls. Giant. And wherever you go from here, you'll sooner or later come up against them. Each has a powerful soul and a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. <laughs> Do you ever cry out for help? The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You'll face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. Yes, we will be joining the Way of the Blue. We get the Blue Seal. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the Blue Sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the Sentinels cradle you in their embrace. By the way, let's examine this. No, this isn't the deaths I've had. But if you're playing offline, which, you know, is always fun, uh, or you're, you know, playing the game normally, you will see that, well, <laughs> by God, Many people have died in this game. This is every death that's ever happened in this game. All 200... 211,954,201 deaths have happened in this game out of every single player in the game. Uh, like I said, if, if you're offline, it shows, it shows you how many deaths you have. Um, so that's always good. Yeah, so... For right now, we've actually checked out uh, just about everything. Except for this. Letters are beyond recognition. I believe in the Brazilian, uh, the Brazilian part of the, the Brazilian type of this game, it t it says something about the rest of giants. If I if I'm not mistaken, um, it says something about that. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll get more information later. But let's talk to uh, fan favorite Emerald Herald. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a pawn of fate. Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side. Till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. Essence Flask uses this. Go on this. and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. 
He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Hmm. So. Bearer of the curse, seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, right, stronger souls. Conversation. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Okay. Seek those whose names are unutterable. The four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. Is that a shard you found? Here, let me see it. So that I may help you. To see light. To see hope. However faint it might be. So, Emerald Herald is the person we level up at. Just like the, uh, fire... Um... Can't remember. Firekeeper from Dark Souls 3. We use her... To level up. Um, however, there is a bit different uh, stats. We still have vigor, we still have endurance, we still have vitality. We still have attunement, we still have strength, dex, int, and faith. We don't have luck, but that's fine. We have adaptability. Adaptability is something of great failure. Uh, basically, if you look at what it levels up, it levels up bo uh, poison, BNS, I forget what that is. Uh, HP and it levels up uh, resistant to poison, bleed, petrification, curse, and it increases your agility and poise. These are. This is one of the most useless levels up in the game because armors do this already. Uh, basically, the, what this is is just, oh, you're more defensive now. When in reality, you really don't need this. Um, no other, other ones. We have HP, very similar to how it was in Dark Souls 3. It just levels up the health for the most part. Except it doesn't help with... I, th I think the one in HP in the last time helped with magic. It doesn't help with magic anymore. It actually helps with petrification curse. Not petrification curse. It helps with petrification. Which is what curse is in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3. Curse is something else. Uh, endurance helps with HP, stamina, physical defense, and poise. You know, all the normal stuff. Vitality, very similar. Equipment load, physical defense, and poison resistance. Attunement uh, allows you to cast more cells and allows you to cast faster. Strength, mainly only affects strength. Dex, mainly only affects dex, except it helps with bleed and poison damage. That's what that is. Adaptability, I've explained it. And int. Int is something of great magic. Uh, where it affects a lot of stuff. It affects magic, fire, and dark. Um, right. And faith is the same thing except with bleed and lightning. Um, you know, with miracles and stuff. But sadly, I can't level up right now. But I can upgrade my Estus Flask Shard. So, for the most part, we're done here. Uh, we're done in Majula, so we'll start heading down to the tunnel. Um, I mean, there's not much other than that. But wait, there's a little bit more I want to do. I know, I know. Come up here, you pick up these five homeward bones, and you talk to this thing. You enter Covenant. So, Covenant Champion of Champions is an interesting one. It actually gives enemies 50% more health, 50% more damage, and allows them not to disappear. Disappearing, I'll explain a little bit later, when we actually see our main first enemy. You know, not once in the tutorials. Um, but, in general, uh, if you're trying to grind out for uh, something, I would go with uh, the Champion of Champions, because it makes grinding that much easier, while at the same time not. Oh, he did. I'm just gonna abandon the covenant though because we don't need it. That's kind of it. Oh my, haste makes waste. <laughs> so with that, let's head down to the deep. Oh, pretty. We'll, we'll actually begin 
uh, to buster up the ability to fight Afro's boss. Crimson Parma, it's a normal shield. It's a small shield. You parry with it, and it blocks 35% uh, damage. Um, that's kind of what most shields do. Not 35% damage thing, but most shields will just block damage. Uh, some of them don't, but that's only a few of them. So, we have another dagger of sorts, the Broken Thief Sword. Another great dagger. It's very similar to how uh, the dagger is normally. You can still parry with it. And all that. However, the heavy attack is like a normal sword. While this heavy attack is a stab. Um... Yeah, now that we've kind of gotten all the uh, guys out of the way, we head to Hyde's Tower of Flame, which we'll be starting next episode. So don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. And tomorrow's ep uh, sword of the, the day will actually be a whip. I know I can't use it, but it's really powerful in this state. So, yeah, it'll be a whip. So, let's do it. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time where we start and most likely finish Hyde's Tower of Flame. I'll see you guys. See you guys then. Peace.